Warning, there are offensive words in this podcast. Also, defensive words. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Stamps.com and by Impeachment Hearings 2019. I'm in the hearing now. I, I am here. And now, The Scathing Atheist. This is Bill, Zach, Keegan, and Quinn. And we did, in fact, evolve from, from filthy, filthy monkey, monkey men. men. And given the number of boys in this household, our mom knows more than anyone. That whole filthy thing, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Day. It's November 14th. And it's Loosen Up, Lighten Up Day. It's, uh, <laughs> it's all about breathing. I don't think that's how they meant it. I'm no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from John Bon Jovi's New Jersey, <laughs> Cincinnati Swing State, and Good Husband Georgia, this is The Skating Atheist. On this week's episode, we'll talk about TI measurement, and we won't mean calculators. <laughs> the White House email server tries to invade Poland. And Tom and Cecil will be here to justify the second explicit tag that we had to put on this episode. But first, the diatribe. I step outside for a smoke, quick while I still can, and I see that there's a little bag of religious pamphlets and shit hanging off my door handle. And I'm kind of pissed just because I don't like having to scrape religious barnacles off my house, but I'm even more pissed because I was inside the goddamn house when they left it. They didn't bother to knock and try to sell me their Jesus face to face. They just left a bag of chick track bullshit there and ran. And I've been looking forward to the door to door evangelist since I moved here. But yet again, they took the coward's way out and just left a bag of shit on my porch without the decency to at least set it on fire. So I'm looking through it because it's usually good for a laugh. But the main pamphlet was good for a lot more than that. On the front, it shows a tree line road with the words, how to know you're going to heaven printed across it. And, and, and this is probably the most common form of religious pamphlet, right? They open up with that ridiculous eternal happy versus eternal sad stakes that they've set up. And then they promise you a nice, easy means to ensure the former. So the beginning's usually some variation on how to make sure you're not going to have your flesh burned off by demons for eternity for disagreeing with me. But then... On the inside, it accidentally disproves intelligent design by reminding us that their dumbass God can't even intelligently design a book. I mean, look, if you take Christianity at face value, the very most important thing one can take away from the Bible is the means to salvation, right? If it serves no other function, at the very least, you should walk away from that book with a clear idea of the steps you need to take in order to get to heaven and avoid hell. But no sooner have you opened up the pamphlet than you're confronted by the fact that God very much neglected to do that. Right, Because they can't exactly quote from the part of the Bible that tells you how to get to heaven. That part doesn't exist. Instead, they have to cherry pick a bunch of unrelated sentences and build their case around it with theological push pins and yarn. For example, step one of five is know that you have sinned. So where do they go to make the case for that? Do they go to the Bible that says the first step to getting to heaven is to acknowledge your sins? No, because that part doesn't exist. Instead, they slap together two non-consecutive sentences from Romans to get, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, despite having a book with three quarters of a million words plus, they cannot find a single sentence that succinctly makes the point that they believe is the first step in ensuring eternal paradise. In fact, even when they're allowed to smush two disparate sentences together, they can't make that point with them, right? There's nothing in that sentence about acknowledging those sins or about that being foundational to punching my heaven ticket. It's just a couple spots in Romans where Paul's like, yeah, I said you guys suck, but everybody sucks. That's it. And to underscore that, by the way, the pamphleteer felt the need to add several sentences of their own at the bottom to explain what the fuck that had to do with getting to heaven. But even if the words matched the point they were trying to make, it would still be ridiculous. You mean to tell me that the very first step in my salvation, the first thing that I have to know as preamble to everything else in your religion is presented without fanfare in the 45th book out of 66? 
Right? God decided to put all the genealogies up front, but tuck step one and how to get to heaven into two poorly worded sentences on page 1430. Now, for step two in the process, know that God says there is a price owed because of sin. We jump all the way ahead to Revelations to cherry pick that bit about whoremongers, murderers, sorcerers, and liars all having their part in the lake, which burneth with fire and brimstone, which all by itself is a pretty shitty passage to have to use, right? In a single sentence, it equally condemns murderers, people who pay for sex, fictional beings, right? Like a D&D character type and people who tell you that those pants don't make your ass look big. All equivalent actions according to this authority. But then we get to step three, which is know that Jesus paid that price for you. And to justify that one, they go back to Romans. So... (laughs) God intended you to read this thing like a goddamn pick a path adventure where you're supposed to read from the outside in. You're supposed to read all the passages from shortest to longest, maybe. I mean, we wouldn't accept this kind of bullshit in a book on how to bake cookies, would we? If the first two thirds of the book never even mentioned cookies and the actual steps were vaguely worded in random parts of the appendix, we would conclude that this was a shitty cookbook. And yet Christians are willing to present this as the very most important subject as addressed by the very most perfect book as inspired by the very most perfect being. But their good book is a long ways from perfect. Hell, it's a long ways from good. But that should come as no surprise. Right. Like if a glance at the politics of America today teaches you only one thing, it's going to be that Christians have a pretty fucked up definition of good. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the Shadrach and Mesach to my Abednego, Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick. Fellas, are you ready to keep your cool? And then immediately turn around and murder everyone who disagrees with us. Yes. 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 That's the story. Yeah. (laughs) There you go. The absolute morality of the Bible. It's good stuff. You got to take the absolute value and then it's super positive. (laughs) Yeah. Right. No. (laughs) Moral lesson. In our lead story tonight, rapper T.I. wants to fuck his daughter and will forever be angered by the knowledge that somebody else actually gets to. The fuck is happening? Right, let's just cut to the fucking chase. That's the goddamn story. Also, he's a misogynistic piece of shit that would be ceremonially mulched if there was any justice in the world. And I say all that based on a podcast interview he gave last week in which he detailed the annual hymen check that he subjects his daughter to. Quote, (sighs) Yuck. We have yearly trips to the gynecologist to check her hymen. Huh. But does he go with her? Yes, I go with her. He, oh, he End does. End okay. quote. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, no word yet on whether he's found a gynecologist willing to saran wrap her asshole shut, too. But, you know, he's looking. Cut to T.I.'s daughter cruising for dudes with small dicks. Just, ooh, baby, is that a motorcycle? Come over here for a second. <laughs> Talk to me. <you. laughs> Wait, did you say you have a podcast? <laughs> <What>? Multiple podcasts? <laughs> Is that an AR-15? <laughs> it's not an assault rifle. You're right. <laughs> People use that term wrong. <laughs> now, because you're all grown-ups in the audience who didn't learn sex ed by guessing at the bleeped out parts of the lyrics, I probably don't have to tell you that the hymen and the freshness seal on the mayonnaise are two different things. Yeah, because I have only <laughs> fucked one of those things. Mm. The mayo? Very much so. Okay, yeah, all yep. right, yeah. 100%. Wouldn't pay for either of those things either. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but look, the point is, there are plenty of ways to break a hymen that don't involve sex, was the weirdest of Shel Silverstein's collections. But when informed <laughs> that the hymen could it's be a really broken. really good G. Bloom book, too. Yeah. <laughs> but when informed that the hymen could be broken by, you know, bike riding, horseback riding, or other forms of athletic activity, T.I. responded, quote, she don't ride no horses, she don't ride no bike, she don't play no sports, end okay. quote. Not not really getting the point here, is he? Nope, be whole, sure yeah. ain't. Hey, T.I., uh, she don't use butter, she don't use cheese, <laughs> she don't use jelly, or any of these, she uses Vaseline. Vaseline. Do you get it, T.I.? Do you get it now? Vaseline? And, and dude, look. Butt sex. That's <laughs> what now? we're saying, yeah. We're talking exactly. about butt sex. 
But see, here, here's the thing. There are way too many things wrong with this story for me to get to all of them. Obviously, it's all predicated on that bullshit Christian canard that ties a woman's virginity to her value as a human being. And then on top of that, it's biologically incorrect. It's degrading. It's sexist. It's stupid. And it should be considered a form of child abuse, or at least it should be considered that if she was a child, the punchline to the whole goddamn story is that he is talking about his eight. 18 year old daughter the adults yes, yes. <laughs> and I, I never understood this attitude from dads like oh i want my child to have all the best that life has to offer except for this super fun thing which we all agree we enjoy yeah right <laughs> that would be like saying okay i'm gonna provide for my kid but he better never ever go to a water park my <laughs> ghost friend does not want him to go to a water park <laughs> hold on hold on the best thing you could think of to compare with sex was water parks. Okay. Well, it takes him a similar amount of lube for both. So and pee. Well, as I was trying <laughs> to write that joke, I could not think of a good thing that religion didn't forbid. I was like, "Do you want your kid not to have food?" <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> okay. What if you wanted your kid shrimp? Not to, oh, 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 fuck it. This. Poly cotton blends. God damn it. Park. Yeah. <laughs> what do normies think is fun? Zip line. <laughs> water parks are a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> All right. So, and for what it's worth, I don't have a source on this other than a friend of mine whose husband is a gynecologist, but apparently this isn't particularly unusual, right? It's at least common enough that that dude has sort of a standard script he uses when dads ask about their daughter's hymens. That is goddamn terrifying. So, Tip to all the dads out there, I guess. The optimal amount of time you should spend thinking about your daughter's vagina and its accessories? Zero minutes. Lifetime. Zero minutes, yep. Like, you know, there's certain diseases where I'd make an exception and shit, but the number we're normally shooting for is zero. Especially at 18. 18, yeah. that's really... She's good. All right. Next up in headlines, in Scopes and Prayers News... The state of Tennessee public school system continued believing they were the good guys from Inherit the Wind this year. And they put together a new program that's going to allow kids to leave school early so they can learn about comparative religion. Mm. Um, to be clear, they'll be comparing Christianity to the fake ones. Yeah, yep. right. <laughs> yeah they will. <laughs> but we did get some good news. The Satanists heard about this. And they're going to start a religious education program, too, for spite <laughs> and because they like hearing the jingle. Anna? What are the guys talking about? It's the newest, the greatest Christian freakout. All right, Heath, this is an intervention. You get one Christian freakout an episode. You need help. That's you my need one. Help. <laughs> And that, by the way, atheists, is why we're destined to win this fight. We recognize the power of spite and we don't run from it. Hell, sometimes we even theme charity drives around it. It's good. Damn it's right. Good we do. <laughs> yeah. So they're having a meltdown, Anna. Nothing Great. Happened. So this new Christianity program <laughs> in the public school curriculum got started in Knox County, which contains the city of Knoxville. And once a month, kids can leave early from the School of Hard Knocks, and 10 class at Sturchy Hill Church. So uh, the whole thing, yeah, I get it. It sounds like a giant indoctrination scam. And is that. It's, yep, it sounds it is and that. is that. They're teaching the controversy so kids can finally learn about the other side of the argument from science. The other side of the <laughs> argument, science is one side, this is the other. Some very fine arguments on both sides. Uh, like... Why are there still monkey trials? Somebody has to ask the hard <laughs> questions. So pending a vote by the school board, which to be clear is a group of parents mostly in Tennessee, they'll be firing up the new Bible study program next semester. And, and this is impressive because literally the only place you can learn less things than a Tennessee public school is a Tennessee church. Yeah, it's right. Like, like anywhere yeah. else they sent them would have been a step up, right? Yeah. So it looks like the new policy in Tennessee is going to allow religious groups to have special propaganda classes for public school kids. And as usual, the Satanists were waiting right outside that school board meeting, brandishing milk in a menacing fashion, ready to go. So in response to the Christianity program, the Satanic Children's Ministry of Knoxville 
which is apparently a thing that exists and makes me very, very happy. They made the following announcement on Facebook last week. Quote, we are so excited. We want to thank Sturchy Hills Church and Knox County Public Schools. We could not have done this without you. We've been waiting patiently for another program to be introduced because once Knox County allows one religious organization to come into the schools with a release program, they have to let us all in. Your children can be released from their school to come learn about Baphomet. We'll even send your children back to school with candy, prizes, and educational materials so they can share our program with their classmates. End quote. Hey, Satanism, if, if you guys need some help the science to find the unborn fetus mazes for your worksheets, let me know. I've been doodling <laughs> that for years. True. So we'll see how this all works out. Sometimes the satanic pump fake is good enough to scare the Christians back into constitutional alignment for a second. But sometimes it takes a bit longer. So we might have a chance to send Eli down to Knoxville to teach his satanic improv workshop for kids. So fingers crossed. And in transubstantiation news tonight, it's that time of the week where we report back on Christianity's favorite and I ooping target, trans people. This week's bizarre meltdown comes in the form of an article titled The Transgender Cult Stole My Daughter and reads like Mike Pence's what? slam poetry. <laughs> now, it's worth noting that this article truly, truly has no content. The entire thing reads like someone narrating a Saw movie from the next room, except they're, they're doing it about perfectly healthy life choices made by adults. This person's life seems, uh, well, pretty good. And I'm, I'm covered in poison blood. This escalated so fast. It got away from me. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so if I may, I would like to do a dramatic reading of said article. Oh, please. <clears throat> Your beloved child has been kidnapped by a sadistic cult. The cult brainwashes her to believe you are the enemy. The brainwashing erases her entire childhood. Every good memory is replaced with memories of abuse that never happened. Okay, but what are the bad memories replaced with? That's weird. <laughs> you, you, you keep those. Yeah. The cult convinces her to inject poison into her body and to get her healthy body parts amputated. And damn it, amputating healthy body parts is a boy thing, and it is not consensual. Yeah, get it right. <laughs> <laughs> you panic. You scream. You sob. You beg. You are reduced to nothing. You search for help everywhere. Nobody will help. I'm doing running motions back and forth on my side of the mic. Okay, I want good. you to know that. Nobody will stop the cult. In fact, the government investigates you and tells you to approve of what the cult is doing to your daughter. The world has gone mad. <laughs> the world has gone mad and I am sane. Yeah, I am the right, sane person. Yes. Read my article in the Christian <laughs> Post now. Yep. <laughs> Society celebrates the cult and ridicules parents who fight back. Some parents are willingly handing their children over to the cult and cheering their child's destruction. The child what? you love with everything in you, the child you would die for, is now unrecognizable, replaced by someone who holds you in contempt. They're cheering this? Yes. They're cheering that. It's weird. They got it's a, a weird wave. cheer. It's weird to do the wave during an operation. Can I just say that? <laughs> I mean, he got kicked out of that room. You scream when you see her severed breasts and collapse, sobbing. My God, my God, what have they done to my baby? Stop doing this in second person, <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> I didn't like it when N.K. Jemison did it, and she didn't make me a transphobe. Also, you're not winning no Hugos, lady, so. <laughs> also, do doctors show you the severed breasts <laughs> yes, of your child? <laughs> Re like they're doing a fucking heart rip fatality <laughs> like Kano on Mortal Kombat? What? Mm -hmm. You nearly... So here's, here's the rest of the article by this very sane, normal person. You nearly drink yourself to death when you find out the cult cut out her entire reproductive system. No, 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 no! That's what's written. Okay, that's, that's typed. He these typed are, that. Yep. yep, these are all quotes. They took my baby's womb. They took her eggs. She doesn't know any better. She's still a little girl. You reach out to every government agency you can think of. Wait, wait. <laughs> Sorry. The Parks Department. <laughs> <laughs> they cut off my daughter's tits. Okay. Rick Perry's just like, energy, fuck. 
Uh, couldn't think of that many. <laughs> Just <the He's>, two. <laughs> and every organization fighting the cult. You think there's nothing more the cult could do with her? You are wrong. You finally go to see her twice within six weeks to beg and plead what? with her. Not Wait. to let the <laughs> such a such a specific thing to not let the cult do this next terrible yeah. thing <laughs> twice in six weeks. That is a weirdly mundane detail <laughs> yeah, about right. that. That's not a lot. <laughs> You're rewarded mosaic status through Chet Blue. <laughs> 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 the Admiral's Club is delightful, <laughs> but then then they flay your daughter. What? <laughs> You get a chicken sandwich. On right. It's fine. <laughs> How? There's no reason to believe that's not in this article. <laughs> Sorry. Continuing. You cannot stop it. So you beg, please, don't hurt my daughter. Here, take my arm instead. All of it if you need to. What? I don't need it. Just take it. <laughs> okay. So that's the new game that we're all playing. <laughs> um, trophy arm collection from Stupid Bigots. Go. We are Rocket Raccoon. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Your attempts are futile. You cannot stop the torture. So you sit alone in a motel room, sobbing until you choke on your own tears, praying with everything in you, hugging a pillow, rocking back and forth, pretending it was your baby while you softly sob a song. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. I am not making that up. These are direct quotes from this fucking artist. I need a ringtone of this guy singing his entire essay, especially that part. I will pay a lot. Oh, for a while, your mind is gone. <laughs> Maybe a little while longer than you realize, even. Yeah. You call another Make mother who has a daughter <laughs> whose breasts have been cut off by the cult. You sob together. Then you wait in a room, knowing that nearby, <laughs> no. the sadistic cult is skinning and mutilating your baby. Skinning? Jesus fucking Christ. Sure, she's legally an adult now, but the stuffed animal you bought her yesterday that she picked out says otherwise. <laughs> to be fair, it was a Teddy Ruxpin with a Joel Osteen tape inside. <laughs> yeah, that's on you. Rage builds with each passing second, and you contemplate what life in prison would be like. What? <laughs> You now see very clearly what kind of things you are capable of. Fire boils through your veins with bloody carnage dancing violently in your head. But she needs you now more than ever. So you can't. This is just one mother. One child. You you contemplate <laughs> murder out loud on a blog post. And the fact that your intended victim is a type of surgery somehow doesn't make it any less terrifying. <laughs> Was he just describing a John Q scenario? <laughs> he thinks he's the good guy in this? Mm -hmm. There are Jesus thousands Christ. of more cult casualties. Daughters, sons, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, aunts. Lo this is too long. This is too long. <laughs> Uncles, grandparents, <laughs> nieces, nephews, cousins. Second Nailed cousins, it, God. Third <laughs> cousins. All casualties of the sadistic cult. And let's not forget wives with suddenly stunning and brave husbands. What? All of the lesbians under attack. What? And the erasure of women's rights. Wait, I'm sorry. Are the trans people What's attacking happening? lesbians? <laughs> and I'm sorry, if you're a Christian, isn't that kind of like the T-Rex eating the raptor at the end of the Jurassic Park? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> My beloved child was kidnapped by a sadistic cult. Will yours be next? And here is my literally my favorite part of the article. Are you ready? It's a little blurb at the bottom. It contains my favorite word. <laughs> The Kelsey Coalition is a nonpartisan, unfunded, volunteer-run organization whose mission is to promote policies and laws that protect young people from medical and psychological harms, particularly as it relates to the medicalization of gender. I love that it's unfunded. You bet your ass Unfunded, yeah. And nonpartisan. <laughs> nonpartisan. Got a lot of, yeah. got a lot of greed party members. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of funding, we got a lot of money to raise yet this month, so we're going to close the headlines a little early. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Jumanji. And when we come back, Tom and Cecil will be here to do good, bad, well. Okay, you got your keys? Yes. Are you sure? Because I don't want to go back. Do you have I, them? No, I hey, have them. Guys, I, guys, what are you guys doing? Oh, we're headed to the post office to send out Christmas presents. Who goes to the post office anymore, dude? It's It's 2019. We got to send the presents. We got to go to the post office. Yeah, I got to send them. But why not just use stamps.com? 
What's stamps.com? Well, stamps.com brings all the services of the U.S. Postal Service right to your computer. Whether you're a small office sending invoices, an online seller shipping out products, or even a warehouse sending out thousands of packages a day, stamps.com can handle it all with ease. Well, that sounds pretty convenient, but is it going to save us money? You bet it will. With stamps.com, you get five cents off every first class stamp and up to 40% off priority mail. Don't spend a minute of your holiday season at the post office this year. Just sign up for stamps.com instead. Wow, that's huge savings. And where do we sign up? Well, there's no risk. With our promo code SCATHING, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitment or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in SCATHING. That's Stamps.com, enter SCATHING? All right, Noah, we are in. Let's Uh do this. Yeah. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. So, so who are you guys uh, mailing presents to anyway? Uh, each other. Yeah, each other. Why not just, you know what, never mind. never mind. What did you get me? You have to wait. Just tell me. It's my keys. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's finally that time. The moment that we practice for all year or at least say later that we had been practicing for when we realized that insulting that person might get us in trouble vulgarity for charity uh once again in 2019 we're going to turn our powers of scorn towards the forces of good for our favorite charity modest needs as of this recording and we're recording on monday by the way so a little bit early but as of this recording we've already raised well over twenty seven thousand dollars even before we add in the match of everything up to a hundred grand so hey you know what little behind pace for me having to quit smoking but you can still make it happen just in case you didn't think i was angry enough already if you want to help get us back on track to take advantage of every penny of that hundred grand match you can make a donation at modestneeds.org between now and thanksgiving Kick in 50 bucks or more. Send us the receipt along with details of who you want roasted to vulgarity, F-O-R, charity at gmail.com. And, of course, Eli has access to the notes, and he keeps writing in intros for him and Heath, (laughs) even though they're already here. So, (laughs) Heath, Eli, welcome to still being here, guys. Eli looks like he sells paper towels for gnomes. (laughs) Heath lives like his aim is to die choking. (laughs) Just like Kung Fu, the legend continues. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And of course, we couldn't do this alone or, well, honestly, we could, we have, but it would be harder. So we're we're contractually obligated to be thrilled to welcome back Tom and Cecil's (laughs) biggest fans, Tom and Cecil. Biggest if measured in tonnage, yes. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, we are each other's biggest fans. It's called friendship, Noah. Maybe read about it in a novel sometime. <laughs> okay. Jesus. I only read I only read nonfiction, sir. <laughs> I know you meant that for Noah, but it's me who you wounded in case you're wounded. It's called multitasking, Eli. Multitasking. <laughs> All right, so let's get this show on the road with our very first donor from our very favorite listener, April Poff. Hi, Hi, April. April. April's the best. Hey, April. Hi, April. And she, Hi, April. April's so, really good at word blitz. I'm playing <laughs> word blitz with her. She's fucking great at it. It's <laughs> infuriating. There you go. All right. Well, she gave us a hundred bucks to roast her Virginia Congressman Morgan Griffith. Okay, Morgan Griffith. He wow. He looks like Philip Seymour Hoffman, except um, instead of taking heroin. He hated black people. (laughs) He's he's Philip Seymour Klansman. (laughs) Morgan Griffith looks like a Civil War reenactor that tells you your buttons would have been sewn on with a different stitch. (laughs) (laughs) He also, he's protesting because he can, he's allowed to use that word because they would have used it back then. (laughs) And it's totally fine. (sighs) Yeah, and he's allowed to wear makeup like that because the governor of Virginia said it's fine. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well done. Next up, Keith would like a roast for retired Navy SEAL Colonel Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt and Jordan Peterson fan Jack Carr. So uh, <laughs> in the name of safety, Eli, why don't you take this one? Wait, wait, wait. Why do I have to take this one? Because we would care least if you died. That is true. Yeah, That's yeah awesome. it adds. Well, me, me too. Me too. All right. So, are we sure that Jack Carr's last name isn't a family name? Because he 
100% looks like he could be half monster truck. Like, <laughs> if Cars 4 turns out to be Mater's sexual discovery, Jack <laughs> is in. I mean, he is, he is ready to play Mater's homophobic dad. No makeup, no animation, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Just, he's Brando. Pixar's uh, got so dark. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Are those... Plot points from Cars? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Cars 4. Maters realizes he's bi, um, and then the whole family <laughs> rejects no. him, but he and Fast Grace. All right, Angelo, we've got a job for you, sir. <laughs> it's called Hybrid, Eli. <laughs> <laughs> hybrid Erasure. All right. All right, we got a group roasting next. Bailey gave us money to roast herself and her friends Casey and Pat. I'll start with Casey, but... I don't, it seems weird to roast her before she's even hatched. I, I, don't, I don't even know what she's going to look like. And no, I'm not saying you're so much egg shaped as egg personality. Right? <laughs> Here's a reason we always leave you with Heath at the live shows. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Actually, it's more because the day we first met this whole crew, Bailey had a constant aggressive stream of drool running down his entire body <laughs> and you guys were all like hey uh alcohol poisoning is heath's personality too he's like, oh, that'll, be, that'll be fun and it was it was fun for me but uh bailey made it apparently and uh he looks like boo nerd was a person <laughs> <laughs> he's like a low-level cobra kai except instead of karate that movie was about a magic the gathering turn. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd lose to ralph macho in the first five seconds of the montage like, right away, like, <laughs> quarterfinals well I, i'll take pat pat looks boring like I, I don't mean his uninspired lice farm of a beard is boring or that is squinty short bus eyes look lifeless and devoid of intellect well though they do what i mean is that he looks boring he looks like he doesn't matter like if you saw him die in a flaming car wreck right in front of you you'd remember the car <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. uh see's like i got one for you don would like a roasting for the book burning students at georgia southern Jesus university <laughs> You should see this pack of idiots standing around the public grill, dropping pages of the book on top of the grates. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look, you fucking hillbillies. <laughs> we should have read a book about how to do this. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you fucking hillbilly. Just because a Latino made it doesn't make it Mexican food. <laughs> but in all seriousness... That guy filming this burning was the most attention Georgia has paid to a book in a long time. So, <laughs> kudos. Kudos. They did the same thing with ballots, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eli, I got a special request for you. Uh, Devin would like a roast of their transphobic uncle, Dan, who splits his free time between riding bikes and harassing women trying to get medical care at abortion clinics. What? Uh, but they would like to roast as Ben Carson. Love it. Love it. Uh, all right, here we go. <clears throat> well, hello there. It's me, Ben Carson. Or is it? That was the fun mystery. Anyway, hey, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Look, as a ninth runner up, you and I have a lot in common. We're both... <laughs> fascinated by the mystery of the wheel we both look several decades <laughs> older than we are and the closest both of us are ever going to get to women who've had consensual sex is an abortion protest but oh, then again oh, Dan, oh, <laughs> i have dementia what's your excuse <laughs> all right got one for me next uh david wants me to roast smokers because what people who are hopelessly dependent on the world's fifth most addictive substance and pay ever increasing taxes on a product that kills them without the common courtesy of intoxication need is more social derision. But no, no, if this fundraiser is successful, I'll be a non-smoker at the end of it. So I need some practice looking down my nose at smokers while ignoring my own unhealthy addiction. So let me give this a shot. You know what I hate about smokers? The way they grind the bones of the innocent to make their stew <laughs> while sucking the souls of the babies to fulfill their twisted obligations to the great horned one. I shall revel in their cancerous demise. And when I see them crawling across the pavement, ejecting vital organs with their spasmodic wheezing and desperately seeking my help, I'll look down upon them and I'll say, 
I'm sorry, you're not allowed within 100 feet of the entrance. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, did, I don't know, I did it. This is my first try. I don't know if I did it right, but I tried. All right. This isn't even quick In fairness, we, we started a podcast that kind of is, you know, like what you just described. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> All right, uh, Heath, this next one is for you. Oh, great. Is it a dog? I'm not doing uh, dogs. Well, kind of. Briggs, God the dog. It. No, no, wait. The dog gave us 250 bucks to roast his owner, Russell. Oh, okay. And if you don't mind, his little sister, Carly. All right. So there's a dog in there, too? Fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Briggs, the dog, for caring about my feelings. <laughs> I love you, too. I do. <laughs> Briggs said he likes me in the email, but he implied love. He <laughs> I also love you. And Briggs owns a human named Russell who looks like Dave Thomas fucked his daughter, Wendy. <laughs> exactly. It's terrifying. The cross between those. He's like a bacon cheeseburger came to life because of incest at Wendy's. <laughs> and I'm only making this one exception to the no dog roasting policy because Briggs's little sister Carly looks like Wendy and Dave Thomas fucked a dog. It's <laughs> Wendy's whole family. They, like, they clearly, this plan got started when great great grandpa went to a terrifying company retreat for the Wendy's <laughs> All right, Cecil, one for you. Uh, Jessica would like a roast of people who hate on stay-at-home moms. What the fuck is wrong with you? Stay-at-home moms are great. I don't ever have to see your fucking kid work, right? moms. <laughs> Leave your goddamn kid in daycare, for fuck's sake. No one wants to see your shitty, runny-nosed bacteria factory. <laughs> I don't need to stop what I'm doing to come out of my office to see what you shoved out of your vagina. Let's maintain some fucking healthy boundaries here and pretend not to care about one another. <laughs> <laughs> It's about time. All right, Tom, I hope you're feeling toasty because mm. Char gave us a whopping $350 and needs some of that signature sting for her two-year-old nephew, Harrison, <laughs> who God she assures it. us she will play this for on his 16th birthday. Oh, nice. That's okay. awesome. <laughs> Happy All right, buddy. Hey. to you. <laughs> hey, uh, Harrison, Harrison. Harrison, big guy. I'm dead now. Hi, Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, how did I know? <laughs> right? Come on, that's cool, Harrison. I got gotcha. you. Hey, Harrison, <laughs> we're both alone. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Harrison, now that you're uh, 16, buddy, uh, you're old enough to know the truth. You weren't a mistake. A, a mistake is a quickie in a gas station bathroom. A mistake, that's a broken condom. But you're not even that, kiddo. You... You're a regret. But and that's worse because that shit only comes up after years of actual experience with you. Every time you cried, every time you had a runny nose or got super fucking excited about some stupid, inane bullshit, you were boring. And every time your parents said, I love you, what they really meant was, I miss my old life. <laughs> Shit. All right. Also to all the other kids who ever listened to this. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> all right, gents. It is time for Vulgarity for Charity 2019's very first Spightning Round. Oh, how I've missed the boomy voice. Does he know it's a filter? No, he does not. No. Like for a cigarette? Yes, yep. Like for, yeah. Yep. Like a cigarette. All right. The category is politicians. Thanks, Colin Stewart, Jim, Marcy, Melanie, Rui, and John for their definite. Rui? Rui? I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce your name. For their donation. So, gentlemen, for this spightening round, I'd like you to give me a new political slogan for the roasty in question. Are you ready? Let's do it. Game on. Let's do it. Ready. All right. Starting with Kelly Craft. Okay. All right. Kelly Craft. I'm UN doing all the hard work we've been doing for decades. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. All right. How about Washington GOP state representative Matt Shea? Oh, wow. This guy's terrifying. Yeah. All right. Matt Shea. I literally wrote a holy war manifesto and tried to start the American Inquisition vote for me. <laughs> but I'm an evangelical Republican, so everyone expected it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll take Christy Noam. Christy Noam, I am not Nikki Haley's stunt double. I'm a different person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about uh, Senator John Barrasso? Uh, Senator John Barrasso, because you don't have to grin to look shit eating. Ooh, oh, yeah, <laughs> John Barrasso. Never mind about those abortion rights. <laughs> All right, uh, Tom Reed. Tom Reed. Sometimes even coat hangers let you down. <laughs> oh, shit. 
<sighs> uh, Stephanie Borowitz. Stephanie Borowitz, not the woman for the hijab. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Excellent. And finally, one of about 27 special requests we got for Donald Trump. Oh, okay, all right. I got, a, I got a couple of them. Uh, Donald Trump, still worried about who's going to sit at his lunch table. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump, when finally he dies, it will be the next time his wife is aroused. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump. Unless she sees Obama somewhere, of course. <laughs> right, right, right. Or the president of, Can of Canada or whatever, the prime minister. Yeah, Trudeau, yeah. 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 Donald Trump, the worst parts of us on display like a spoiled pig in an Asian market. <laughs> <laughs> so perfect. <laughs> all right. Well done. Points all around. Next up, we have a group of folks who really deserve their roasting. We don't want any friendly jabs for these folks. We want righteous retribution on the truly monstrous. I guess what I'm saying is unleash your inner Tom on this one, except for you, Tom. You just stay where you are. Do what you're doing, man. <laughs> and uh, why don't we get the dog pile and started with Dave, who Adam gave us 400 bucks to roast and roast rightly. Jesus. If you see this guy, Dave looks like a young male version of Violet. Beauregard that ate cursed caramel corn and then Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought he looked like Ralph the dog was in a bad fire but couldn't afford the top tier plastic surgeons <laughs> yeah. you know <laughs> with a <laughs> discount <laughs> clinic but yeah like, Dave is rough it looks like Kirby was in dreamland and then slept through the alarm on his tanning bed <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's not good. I, I'm pretty sure that Dave is actually a person of color but it really seems like he's faking it, doesn't it? Like, I feel like he's faking it. He looks like Kevin from The Office tried to pull a Rachel Dolezal. Like, he looks almost exactly like the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man in Blackface. Yeah, exactly. yeah. He does. Dave, you got requested for this roast by someone who wanted their friend's ex to be roasted. Think about that, Dave. You are such a useless piece of shit. You cause so much damage that even two steps removed, everyone hates you. <laughs> I seriously, I had to calm Kevin Bacon down just to do this roast myself. <laughs> it's no great accomplishment to be this <laughs> shitty, Dave. Being a shithead is easy. It's the lowest, simplest, dumbest, meanest version of yourself given free reign to make the world a little worse for your being a part of it. What makes me fucking crazy here isn't that you're such a shit. It's that being the kind of banal shit you've chosen to be is just so fucking lazy. Yeah. <laughs> Dave looks like he ate his way out of the call center he worked in telling people that the IRS <laughs> wanted their Google Play gift cards. <laughs> he, he looks like a misguided failed attempt at Ben and Jerry's shit flavored ice cream was given a job at corporate to hush the whole thing up. <laughs> That's so mean. All right, Cecil, this next one's for you. Jeff would like his homophobic, transphobic, Trump supporting coworker Eric roasted. The picture on this guy. Eric looks like someone cut up all the insoles, mixed and matched the parts, sewed a humanist shape, and then animated it with cockroaches. He's, he's just standing still in traffic on the expressway at 3 a.m. of people. Oh. <laughs> All right, Tom, this one's for you. Uh, Leone would like a roast of her religious Holocaust denying Trump supporting asshole mom. All right. Deny the Holocaust all you want. Deny facts and reason and evidence. That's fine. That It is. It's fine. The one thing that you can't deny is that the one person in all the world who should be able to see past your foibles and faults, your own fucking kid, they see you. They see you and they are appalled and you can't deny that you deserve this and that you will die with that lonely gulf of space in your heart unfulfilled. <laughs> <laughs> got her. Okay. So I got, I got a two I for four. I missed it for 364 <laughs> days. I missed this. It's never, it's never, it's never a nine. It's never a nine. It's always an 11. It's yeah, always yeah, mediums. 11. All right. I got a two for four, you guys. Dan gave us a hundred bucks for Heathen Eli to roast Robert Price. Oh, amazing. Yeah, and Dan's request was for us to reenact Robert Price losing his virginity. <laughs> but as good mythicists, we don't believe that ever happened. <laughs> Although, based on the photo we have, it looks like that pair of suspenders that Robert Price is wearing is penetrating deeply. <laughs> like, oh, 
Maybe T.I. the rapper should check Robert's Moob Hyman. <laughs> <laughs> Moob Hyman. Oh, bravo. Bravo. Yeah. Bravo. Look, I could make fun of the fact that Robert Price looks like Santa's divorce lawyer. <laughs> I could make fun of his Republican atheist Facebook page, which has, as of writing this, 1,466 fans <laughs> and will best be remembered for being hung up on by Cecil. <laughs> but no, Robert. Wait, really? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Amazing. no, Robert, I I'd like to roast you like this. Robert, if you're listening and based on your Twitter, you are listening. I, I know you're angry. It feels like the feminists and the Antifas and the Black Lives Matters. They, they took away a world that was yours and now you're sort of left scraping the dregs with people who keep turning out to be Nazis. But know this, Rob, right now, here, in the middle of this charity drive in 2019, even though it's just for a second and is probably for the last time till Hemant does a pity obituary when you die on the toilet next year, <laughs> you matter in atheism again, Robert. You oh. do. Right now, you matter. <laughs> and it's gone. Did you enjoy that? Was it fun? That was good. Good times? Great. <laughs> All right. Uh, go ahead and sit on that toilet whenever you're ready, Robert Price. All right, Noah, <laughs> you're up next. Brian would like a roast of creationist John Morris Pendleton. <laughs> yes. Go. Yes. The guys at the other creationists tell to shut up. <laughs> like, you're making us look dumb, man. Like, like, he believes all the normal crazy shit that creationists believe, but just when they're all nodding along, he'll say that Satan disguises himself as a UFO when he wants to go a probing or <laughs> that there are still living dinosaurs in Africa. And he also looks, and I checked a lot of video to confirm this, he always looks like he's either getting punched by like an invisible fist or flinching right before getting punched, <laughs> <laughs> which it makes me hopeful every time I see it. All right. Uh, so this next one is for all of us. Bill gave us 500 bucks to roast Mormon apostle Talon Oaks. <laughs> okay, that, no, no, no. I just looked at this picture. There is no way this is a real person. This is a practical joke. He looks like if Alfred E. Newman had aged in real time with Mad Magazine and heard all the mean things we said about him. He, he looks like he's the reason there's sexual harassment training at Gringotts. <laughs> he looks like his name is Dallin Oaks. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. He does. Uh, great. He looks like he forgot to become a Keebler elf at some point. But, um... Pepperidge Farm remember. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a Jeff Sessions shaped pimple on Nosferatu's chin. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like if you made James Carville into jerky. Again, again, <laughs> yeah, again. That's a second, second, jerky second time. Take. Yeah. I mean, for fuck's sake, I had no idea naked mole rats could get so big. And has such bad taste in menswear. <laughs> <laughs> and bad legal opinions, too. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Okay, so friend of the show, Brian Ego, gave us money just because. Hi, Brian. 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 How you doing, Brian? Uh, and Reynolds gave us Package 200 store. smackolas. Smackolas? <laughs> <laughs> Packy store. We call that in New England, people say Packy store. It's not a slur. I just want to say that on record one more time. <laughs> Package store. It's short for whatever. All right. So uh, Brian and, and Reynolds both gave us money to roast whoever pisses us off most at the moment. So let's uh, let's get a little dealer's choice going. All right. OK, I'm going to go first. Great, great pick. I Everyone love should it, do this. Brian. This is great. I, hey, Brian, fuck you. Do the job for us, man. I don't need yeah. extra work. <laughs> right. No, it chooses you. <laughs> don't you guys just pull one out of your hate jar? Isn't yeah. that everyone has a hate jar? <laughs> Okay. Okay, here we go. Fuck potlucks. What a <laughs> fucking <laughs> really? lazy potluck dinners. Any way to serve food. It's always cold, <laughs> it's wet, it's nasty, it's gloopy fucking foodborne illness on a spoon. Fucking gross ass Campbell's soup laden monstrosities next to jello molds with unidentifiable bits in them. Soupy <laughs> shit that's supposed to be firm and firm shit that's supposed to have more liquid. Potlucks are the hand job of buffets. You could do it way better on your own with way less mess. And you don't have to lie that you really enjoyed it. Uh, I said the realization yeah. that Cecil, our friend who can cook incredibly well, has probably brought 
his food to a fucking potluck where someone like me brought cups and was like, yep, we both fucking potlucked. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sous vide that for three days? No, no. <laughs> All right, Cecil, amen. Is that a savory jello mold? I'm fucking leaving. Absolutely. I'm not putting my food next to that. I'm bringing my food back home. Okay. I'm going to eat don't... the whole thing. You don't like French onion soup jello? What else? <laughs> uh, I do, right. actually. That, that sounds would be great. fucking amazing. When I found out about that, I got really excited. There's like Parmesan jello. Mm. Yuck. All right. So here's the one that I have been aching for. Fuck these fucking Lynels. I'm right. sitting up in a tree, what? shooting this thing with arrows and freezing it into the vacuum of space and time for an hour. And what do I get from it? Fucking bubkis. People have written master's theses in the time it takes me to kill this weird furry centaur combination. And then it better drop a goddamn Asa Akira in-game fleshlight when I kill it. I get nothing. <laughs> Eli, you can no. use the ancient arrows. I don't want to use the ancient arrows. I don't want the fucking... I don't, I just upgrade my barbarian armor. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the Lionel. We get to choose. What? That's who I choose. <laughs> All right. So fuck Lionels and fuck potlucks so far. I would also like to add fuck joggers <laughs> and fuck jogging in general. <laughs> fuck everything involved in jogging. Fuck you. And fuck you for making eye contact oh, with me while wait. you're being healthy and I I'm not. Don't wait. look at me. Don't look at me healthily. Fuck you. <laughs> An extra fuck you for jogging in place at the corner while you wait for the goddamn <laughs> light to change. What are you doing? I'm going to walk in slow motion in place right next to you and invade your personal. And we're not making eye contact anymore. Fuck you. Do that jogger posture. Yeah. Get out of here. You're only going to walk next to me for like three minutes, though, and then you're going to be out of breath. So it's fine. No <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, when given this opportunity, I always go to the same place. That would be the bearded clipboard guy in the Chevy commercials that looks like he starts every interaction with a stranger by asking them to calm down regardless of how calm they are in the moment. He's like the distillation of every substitute teacher and his fucking presence makes me want to give him a good goddamn reason to ask me to calm down. <laughs> Fuck that guy. How many people have you hit with a clipboard that they started? <laughs> Andrew said don't answer that. Too many. <laughs> Too many. All right, you know who I really, truly fucking hate? Radical honesty, people. There's nothing radical about using unvarnished cruelty and overdisclosure to burden other people with your shit. There's what? nothing inherently good about honesty if honesty <laughs> is just your bullshit shorthand way of spreading out your own emotional baggage onto other people. You know what radical honesty sounds like? It sounds like these roasts. It sounds like being mean for the simple joy of taking yourself out on others. It's a shitty, lazy way to disguise what is nothing more interesting than garden variety malice and childish whining. Cut that shit out and keep the worst fucking parts of yourself to yourself and then do the work to fix your fucking character defects rather than publicly celebrate them while chastising others, you worthless cunts. <laughs> I'm making a wow. techno remix of that and it's my <laughs> cell phone ring forever. All right, <laughs> so, so fuck potlucks, Lionels, yep, yep. joggers, the Chevy guy, and honesty. Okay, gentlemen. <laughs> Radical honesty. <laughs> Last but not least. Is there moderate honesty that's different? <laughs> yeah, it's totally it's My citation thing. needed essays. <laughs> <laughs> Centrist honesty, just asking questions. Joe Biden is the title. <laughs> All right, so as of this moment, our current top donor is Sam, who donated 1000 and five dollars for us to do our worst for his good friend Raphael. So let's send Reggie made it easy for us at the he end. Really here. Did. Let's send Raphael off with the VIP treatment. All right, I'll go first. Um, well, sorry to interrupt. Fuck you for trying to do the prices right thing and do a thousand five. Somebody <laughs> just go to two thousand. Come on, yeah, <laughs> round up, round up. <laughs> All right, Raphael sounds like one of those guys whose defining feature is to be ridiculously talented, but only in skills so utterly useless as to be almost as comical as they are tragic. <laughs> Seriously, it's not just that you'd be picked dead last in a zombie survival situation. It's that life picks you last every time. 
You're the guy everyone wants to tell people they know because the funny story about you is you. <laughs> you are a living parody, a man whose social and professional resume has attached to it a squirting flower of absurdity. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite sentences. <laughs> That's pretty great. <laughs> it's not just that you have no economic value. It's that what you yourself value, how you spend your time, who you have chosen to be, the man you have built from the clay of your soul is a misshapen lump of oblivious and pointless endeavors only tolerated by a world so indifferent to your efforts that you fly under the radar of anyone's actual fucking notice. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe skip All right, that your one. Buddy. Skip that one. All right. That's your yeah. buddy. Uh, Raphael. Water squirt. <laughs> Raphael, you poor beautiful soul. My brother from another mother. Yeah. How are you a semi professional Smash Brothers commentator? <laughs> what can a human being possibly lack that you haven't quite risen to the full professionalism required to explain the same four characters wave dashing around each other <laughs> waiting for a successful edge guard? What happened, man? Raphael. Aim Play for the fucking stars. original also. Yeah. Wave dashing is garbage. Aim for the stars, buddy, because even if you miss, <laughs> Raphael, if you aim for the stars and you miss, you'll be dead, and that's for the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Raphael, dude, you went to Eli's alma mater and got an even less useful degree. <laughs> also Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> you have even worse facial hair than Eli. You were introduced to your best friend when the guidance counselor slipped him five bucks to not hate you for a day. Nice. And by the way, it took Eli's <laughs> guidance counselor ten dollars to find him a friend. So you're exactly one step down from Eli in every possible way. You are store brand Eli. And that, <laughs> sir, is the lowest I've ever gone on this segment, I have to say. <laughs> With that pot belly and the banjo, I think we have a new name for that kind of facial hair. The glutton chop. Also, <laughs> I've never seen a dog look more frightened in a photo than the one you're hugging there, Roth. Rover, play twice if you're being harmed, buddy. <laughs> All right, uh, Raphael, we're going to do this one more time. Dude, you look like Mexican Elvis Presley from a Donald Trump propaganda poster about why we need the wall. Oh, shit. <laughs> you're like you're like Jermaine from Flight of the Concords, except the flight got hijacked by a troll. <laughs> <laughs> and now you guard a bridge with obnoxious musical riddles. And I can't tell when they start and stop and when to just speak instead of singing. And you go in and out as a pain in the ass. You're an overrated show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so on that note, we're going to pause to catch our breath. The next segment of Vulgarity for Charity will be over on Cognitive Dissonance on November 18th. Tom, Cecil, thanks for stopping by, guys. Before we make way for the next up cue, I want to urge you guys one more time to donate to Modest Needs before Thanksgiving Day. I don't want to keep smoking, but I'll do it. We were about four grand off pace going into this week, so we need your donations. Remember, it's modestneeds.org. Send your receipt and your roast request to vulgarity, F-O-R, charity at gmail.com. Anyway, that's all the blasphemy we've got for you tonight, but we'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister show's Hot Friend God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday, and an even newer episode of our half-sister show, Citation needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, I'd be courting demerits if I neglected to thank Ethan Wright for being so hot, Lucid Illusions for being so cool, and Eli Bosnick for being so in a pot of nine-day-old porridge. I want to thank Tom and Cecil one more time for all the work they do every year to make Vulgarity for Charity so successful. Also want to thank Bill, Zach, Keegan, and Quint, the atonal barbershop quartet that provided this week's Farnsworth quote. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best people, Dustin, William, Matthew, Confused British Girl in an American World, Alex Tuma, Cool, Gerald, Stefan, Dead, Zephyr, and other Dustin. Dustin, William, and Matthew, whose dick pics have to be shot in panorama mode. Confused British girl Alex and Gerald, who are so cool the Arctic Blast had to put on a sweater when it got to them. And Stefan, Dead, Zephyr, and other Dustin, whose IQs have more digits in decimal than most of us have in binary. Together, these nine naughty non-believers nudged our net worths northward this week by giving us money. Not everybody has the money it takes to give us money, especially after they made such generous donations to modest needs. But if you still have a few bucks left over that you want to give to us, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash scathingatheist. 
whereby you'll earn early access to an extended ad-free version of every episode, or you can make a one-time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingadius.com. And if you'd like to help but you don't have a few bucks left over that you want to give to us, you can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review, telling a friend about the show, or convincing Disney that the whole fucking point of a streaming service is the ability to binge-watch the goddamn shows. One fight you're going to launch with one fucking episode of one show and a bunch of shit I've already seen? Jesus. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson handles our social media. Our audio engineer is Morgan Clark, who also wrote all the music that was used in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you'll find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingadius.com. Uh, <clears throat> <shit>. <laughs> oh, this is what we get one. for recording in the morning, goddammit. Yeah. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.